Okay, we're going to be doing the cross table cervical spine. This is also known as the dorsal decubitus of the spine because the patient is laying on their back and you are using the horizontal x-ray beam. Now, typically this is usually used for the trauma patient. When they come over from ER, they're laying on the stretcher, they usually have a neck brace on, and you're going to have to take your spine images before you do anything else because the doctor is going to want to know if there's any fractures there before they get to moving the patient around. So we're going to do the cross table cervical spine first. Now when your patient comes over, sometimes they may have already been changed into a, a patient gown in ER or ER has rolled them over and they're still fully dressed. So what you're going to try to do is, is get what metal you can out of the way if they have jewelry or earrings without moving the patient and that can oftentimes be very difficult. But just try to get as much as you can out of the way. Now I have already moved David closer to the image receptor here. but. If your patient is on a spine board, you and another technologist, you'll have a technologist at the feet, you're going to lift this board up and just scoot the patient closer because you want to try to get as close as you can. You're going to have the tube at 72 inches. Again, you're dealing with this long object to image receptor distance. So since we've got several inches, you want to have the tube back at 6 feet. Now, I'm using a 10 by 12 for the cross table cervical. You may see some places use a little bit larger of an image receptor, uh, just depending on uh, if they're trying to see more, but typically 10 by 12 is all I ever use. You want to place your image receptor in so that the length of it is going with the length of the neck. So you want to pay attention to that because you know when your patient's standing up, you've got your image receptor loaded as, as portrait. Well, when they're laying down, they're in the dorsal position, you're going to want it going crosswise. Go ahead and push your image receptor in. Alright, I've got my left marker here. And I should change this to right because it's his right shoulder that is touching up against the image receptor. Okay, for cervical spine, again, you're going to want to locate the thyroid cartilage. And you can see the prominence of it. So we're going to go to that upper edge of that thyroid cartilage so that we're going to be centered at C4. Next is you want the shoulders to be relaxed down so that you can see more of the spine. So you're going to need to speak to your patient, let them know that you're just going to pull their arms down. Now, if they have an injury to the shoulder or arm, you're not going to be able to do much with that, but you can work with the good arm. But once you have the arms down, then you can take your, your image. Sometimes you may encounter patients with really large shoulders, and another technologist might put on a lead apron, and they may actually pull down on the arms and stay in the room during the exposure just to make sure those shoulders are down. Now, if you don't get down to the top of T1. Because remember on your cervical spine you want to be able to see all seven vertebra and then the top of T1. If you cannot see that you're going to want to do a swimmers. So when you do the swimmers you're going to raise up the arm that's closer to the image receptor. We're going to bring this shoulder down and what we're doing with the swimmers is we're getting the shoulders out from each other so that we can shoot in between there and see the cervical thoracic area. So once we get our patient patient's arm 
position like that, we're going to want to come down with our central ray because again, we're going to be cutting across at the very top of T1. Since if I'm unable to palpate the vertebral prominence on him, usually if you just skim directly right above the shoulder, that's usually in a good area of the vertebral prominence. His right side is still up against here, so I will still keep my right marker there. Okay, so this will be our cross table swimmers in the dorsal decubitus position. Alright, to do a thoracic spine cross table, I'm going to change out to a larger size image receptor because we're going to need the 14 by 17 or the 35 by 43. crosswise. Now since we're doing the thoracic, cross table thoracic, our center point is going to enter at the tip of the scapula here. So that's where our center point is going to enter. We're going to be slightly posterior to the mid-coronal and then go ahead and lock that in. Have both the arms up. If you do not raise the arms up, if the arms are down, then that's going to be right in the middle of your spine. Now, if you do have a patient with a hurt shoulder, sometimes if they can have it on their chest like that, that will at least help get it out of the spine some. So, if possible, have the arms all the way up. Okay, and then just double check, make sure that you are centered. This is the right side. Okay, and you can collimate a little bit because I don't have to have the entire chest area. I'm just wanting that posterior portion. Now, something to remember here, I'm just leaving this at 72 inches, and the reason why is because I'm still dealing with some distance here, object to image receptor distance. Now, if he was directly up against there, we could bring it into the 48, but I've got him right on the edge of the stretcher, and I don't want him to fall off the edge, so... This is how we deal with that distance, is increase your SID and that will cut down on the magnification. Okay, so that's our cross table thoracic. And then to do the cross table lumbar, I'm just going to bring it on down, palpate the crest. There's his crest, so I'm going to go an inch and a half above that and then lock your wheels in. Always lock your wheels in. Okay, so now I'm centered over the lumbar area. Again, you're going to use the larger image receptor and make sure that it is loaded crosswise because you are going the length of the spine. So once you have that in, Okay, I collimate a little bit from top to bottom because we don't have to have that entire abdomen. We're just wanting the posterior portion of that spine. Okay, once you have taken all of these images, you're going to get the images checked either with the radiologist or the ER doctor. A doctor has to check these cross table images. And once they say it's okay to move the patient, then you can move the patient to the x-ray table. You have, to, you have to have doctor's permission to remove the neck brace. So always keep that in mind with your cross table laterals. You always check your images first with the doctor. 
they have to okay moving the patient and removing that cervical collar. Okay.